Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. At least it is for me. You might be watching this at night or maybe early in the morning, but we're going to start off with good afternoon. <laughs> so uh, welcome. Today we are going to talk about the healing process and that it takes time. Also, um, whenever you heal emotional wounds, ask and you shall receive. So that's, let's, let's get into it. Um, actually, my name is Whitney <laughs> uh, and I am a holistic lifestyle expert. I am a coach, consultant, a spiritual therapist. I work with the energy body, that subtle energy, um, anything that has to do with, like I said, the energy body, the energy moving, the chakra system, um, the auras, and learning more about the nadis or the meridians, depending on where you got your knowledge from. But I work with that body. That's the body I work with, body, mind, and spirit. So we do, um, and I help my professional millennial women who struggle with overfunctioning. So that's how we got here, right? The spiritual part is that for me, what I've learned from my own experience is so much of that overfunctioning was so loud and so obsessive and compulsive to the point that anything that was subtle that was happening in my body, I couldn't hear it, I couldn't see it, I couldn't tap into it. Even whenever I was usually getting my messages and I know like, okay, this is what I need to do, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, it was all cloudy and it was hard for me to truly um, get back on track to what I needed to do until I started calming that body down, that energy body down, letting go of all the overs over, um, over becoming overwhelmed, having too many people around me that even caused me to get overwhelmed. Like if I know that I like subtleness and subtle calm things, but I'm hanging out and doing things with people who create and have a whole lot of stuff going on, it's going to rub off on me. And so I didn't want that. I don't like that. So I had to do, you know, healing process. I had to take some time to do some work for myself so that I, I could make sure that I was taking care of me first so that I could take care of the people around me. And then that was already filling my cup. And then those around that I wanted to also bring into my world, into my life, then I could do the same. You know, I could be there for them and, and be ready to help them if they needed help or whatever. Um, but I wouldn't let my pain ooze out on them. And so that's the work that I do. Um, so let's get into today with these emotional wounds. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this, the healing process and how that it takes time to heal these emotional wounds. Asking yourself, ye shall receive. I think we forget, or maybe you don't know. What I did, I was, I forgot. And let me say that, like, <laughs> I can remember um, being in school and like going through all this stuff, right? Going, because the work that I do, that I've been trained to do is uh, counseling, therapy, social work, helping people through tough times, right? So as I'm in class and I'm looking at some of the stuff and I'm like, this stuff. I think I could probably benefit from, from some of the things that we got going on. But that dysfunctional ego was like, uh-uh, we ain't got time. Uh-uh. You focus on getting this done so that you can get out, right? Get this done so you can leave. And so that's what I did. So I I didn't start by asking God to heal um like <laughs> to heal me emotionally because I, I was I was on spiritual bypass. I didn't want nothing to do with that. No. That's okay, because I saw what happens as the unraveling started to unfold. And if you weren't grounded, I knew what could happen. So I'm like, nah, sorry, right. I, don't, I don't want that. So I, I can remember distinctively saying, like, that type of healing, I didn't want. I, I had pieces of it. And whenever it didn't work the way I thought it was supposed to do, when nobody explained, like, what this process is and that it takes time and actually truly sat down and had some good conversation about it, um, I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. So for me, my healing process came whenever I was like, I need to heal my body. My body is not doing right. What I didn't know that I know now is that the emotions and everything is trapped inside the body. Like, right, all your stories and everything is inside of you and inside of your muscles, your tissues, the, the subtle energy is it's in you. And so your emotions are calling to be healed, regardless if that's body, mind, spirit, however you get to it. Me, it was first, it was body. I was just like, no, something's wrong. I need to take care of my body. I need to heal it and get it together. Well, I still had to do a level of healing that I didn't know I needed to do, but when I did, you could feel the change. So ask and you shall receive. And this is a body, mind, spirit thing. You're going to, you become more in tune with your body and the shifts that's happening. You have a mindset shift. So the things that you used to do, you won't do. It's going to, it causes a change and it can get uncomfortable. But again, you asked for it, right? And you might be like, well, I didn't want it that much. I only wanted a little bit. So you're asking for this. You're trying to manifest and try to bring all this stuff in but you only got this much space and then you're going to get mad when you're not getting what you really want, right? You're not getting all of what you want. You're going to get mad because you're going to be like, well, this ain't what I want. I didn't want it like this. Well, you only wanted to give up this much space to do healing work. So what else did you expect? 
Maybe you didn't know. Now you do. Now, the other part is um, it'll cause you to make with the healing process. And as it's taking time, you will start to change the people you hang around, your friends, your family, your partnerships, your job, uh, for the people that work at the job. You Instead of being here, you might be like, you know what? It's time for me to go after more. So I'm ready to climb up the ladder. Like things start shifting and changing for you. It will make other people uncomfortable because now you are no longer wanting to be in that pool of stagnancy. You're actually wanting to get up out of the murkiness and make your way over to the river. Because what did Pocahontas say? What I know most about, what I love most about rivers is you can't step in the same river twice. And I was like, that's beautiful because the water is always changing, always flowing. How beautiful is that? That's the healing process. You can, I can go back and revisit things that I've already healed, but because I have made that change and that energy shift in me, I don't, it doesn't have the same energetic reaction. My emotions aren't as reactional. I can just look at the, I can still picture the, you know, the memory of whatever it was. And it doesn't pull at me in a certain way. And sometimes I will look at it in every angle. Like I can pull it up and I'm like, okay, this happened. And I can see, I'm like, what about here? We still mad? No. What about this? We mad? No. Like, it's okay. We can let that go now. And that's exactly how that process works. Again, it takes time. But you are the one that's either asking to asking for it or your body is just like, I'm girl, I'm tired. Like either you're going to go this way or you're going to go this way, but I'm done. Right. And so I'm going to push us more this way so we can get some stuff done so we can start taking care of ourselves. Why are you trying to pull us over here? And that's not even what we need. That's not what we need. Over here is what we need. Because for my ladies, I know they're looking for calm. They're looking for peace and happiness. I know that. And that's what that's what you want. And you have and we get into that point where you have a choice. You can shed those layers. And yes, it's going to hurt a little bit. That's the, that's usually the number one thing. is I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings but you'll hurt yours. You'll continue to abandon abandon you. You'll continue to neglect you. You'll continue to put you behind while you have been helping everybody else on the outside get their stuff together, but you're slowly drowning, right? Everybody else is climbing up, doing their own thing, and you're still trying to push everybody else up while you're still in the bucket and you mad. Like, wait, but I thought, and then you'll get around some people that, because that discernment is all, that, look like they would be a good help to you that you might think well they're gonna help me oh yeah they're gonna help you and what they usually do is they help themselves and then they'll help you in the in the way that they see fit because you can't get further than them like there are people out there that's like that game recognized game and ain't no you know you ain't got to go back and i can't believe you no no because fool me once shame on me right i didn't have that discernment my my meter was off um, so I didn't have that. My meter was off. And then as it starts to get back on point to where it needs to be, then, you know, like, OK, these people, they got to go. I can't spend that much energy with them because that's what we forget. We forget that even just being around people are, that make us feel comfortable when it's time, a season of change, you're going to feel uncomfortable with them. And you're going to have to start using that throat shocker and speaking up and letting them know that this isn't what I want. This is what I want. This isn't this isn't what I want. This is not what I want to do. And if you want to stay with them and y'all want to work things out, then you this is how we can do some change work. What do you think? It's a collaboration. That person might be like, no, I'm good. I don't want a collaboration. I'm all right. But then you have another choice, right? Your friends, your family members, your partners, your jobs, you have another choice. You have another choice to make. So um, <laughs> you have to remember, again, you asked for it. You asked for healing. And even if you're like, I didn't ask, I just asked for a new, I just asked for a new promotion. Okay. That's going to stretch you though. And there's going to be something because then let's say you ask for a new promotion and in this promotion, they were like, okay, we, uh, you'll need to be ready to, um, to be in front of the boardroom and give us a, a memo about, or give us an, whatever, speak to us about whatever happened, um, over the last week, give us an update about what everybody in these departments did the last week. And you might be like, the board is in the directors of this place. Yeah, we need you to do that. Is that fine? Insert, insert shadow. You remember that time you spoke up, right? At that concert, and you were supposed to be, or at that spelling bee, and you just, you just spelled the words right, and you got booed off the stage. Or you remember when you were at that talent contest, and you went up there to sing that song, and you wanted, nope, that didn't work either. Or you remember when you tried for, I don't know, a student council president, and you didn't get that? Huh? You know how nervous you get whenever you start to uh, speak up, you know how nervous, you know how you got a stuttering problem, you know how you got that, you know how you have that speech impediment, it's gonna come up. 
all those things start circling in your head. So what is that doing? It's asking you to heal it. Those those old memories. They can be childhood memories. They can be adulthood memories. Heck, you could have um, been an adult and you were working somewhere and something similar like that happened when they were like, hey, we want you to be a junior shift leader. Now, every day you're going to go in front of everybody in the shift, you know, on that shift. It might only be six to eight people and you're going to have to give a rundown of what needs to be done today. And maybe the first time you did that, there was that one person that just wasn't right that day and, you know, laid you out. Right. Had you feeling all some type of way that could come back in your head, too. So it doesn't have to be you as a child like this stuff. doesn't. <laughs> your shadow ain't got to pull from child stuff. It can pull from things that happened recently, even if it was just yesterday. But the thing was, you asked, what you ask for for that job promotion? In order to get that job promotion, a lot of times there's something else that needs to be healed. And it has to do with that emotional part of us. You want self-confident. You want to build and be confident. But you got all these stories of when your shadow pulled, your shadow pulled up that you weren't confident. You know, that all these things happen. And so what at that point, what you do is you pull them out. You reflect on them. And then you and you pull in and take in why you want to do this. Why do you want this? You remember that why of why you want that promotion. And then that's what's going to help you combat all the other things is, that's triggering you. That's how that works. So it doesn't matter if it's not um, emotional as in like family stuff or as in um relationship like partnership stuff or friend stuff it could be job stuff you may be ready to move up in your job but you got some stuff you need to heal you have some things that you need to heal that's calling you to be healed and so again the healing process you ask for it you don't necessarily have to say i want to be healed from emotional like like i said whenever it was for me i was like no my body needs to be something is going on i had no idea about this world of energy healing i knew from a religious standpoint about the body and the temple and you know making sure we take care of it but i didn't get enough context with that like it didn't give me enough and i'm inquisitive i want to know wait wait i need some more so wait jesus said healed the temple temple as in like like what does the temple look like how do we heal it how do we do it? like i need more than just that and so that's like well go find out and so that's what i did right i needed more i needed to understand more you have this teacher giving you these these things but then where's the rest of it? And so that's up to us to figure out. So the same thing, you want this job, right? Or you want this promotion or even a job. It's gonna cause you to stretch and to change some things up. And it's up to you to say yes or no about it or to continue on or you can stay the same. You'll be uncomfortable either way. When you stay the same, you'll get comfortable being uncomfortable and not in a good way, right? Not in a good way. And it'll change you into someone that you will start to not even recognize anymore. You won't feel yourself. Things won't feel the same. So eventually you decide to do what you need to do to change. Now, um, let's see, lifestyle changes, yeah. Holistic lifestyle changes. So when it comes to doing this healing work, um, embrace that spiritual part of you, embrace that spirituality when it comes to holistic healing and holistic lifestyle changes um doing digital detoxes and digital fast that is a lifesaver turning the phone off oh well, whitney what are they going to think i don't know what you want them to think if you're afraid or you think that they're going to think something wrong, then send them an email and just let them know hey i'm taking some time out from my mind and more than likely most of them be like oh, okay <laughs> like we we craft this big thing in our head of like well they're going to think something's wrong with me well, are you always seeking? Are you are you a sympathy seeker? Are you always seeking sympathy? So then therefore they do are going to think something's wrong with you or are they not going to care and just be like, okay, girl, do you. That's great. I think that's great. Let me know how it goes. If anything, let me know how it goes. But I will do a digital detox, a digital fast, a digital cleanse, digital whatever in, in a heartbeat. Just like right now, I don't have um, I have, don't have Facebook on my phone, even though I know, you know like running my business part, I can use another um system another software to yeah to uh be able to plug into that so that's not a have to for me i was like i don't want this on my phone i never like having it on my phone i don't do much on this let me take it off so i took that off and i put the other stuff behind my main page like my i put youtube and put um instagram because that's the only that's about it i ain't doing nothing <laughs> i ain't doing nothing else that's the extent of my social media but i put it on the back pages of things so that i could get more focused and in tune because i could feel my spirit calling right Hey, we got some messages we need to give you. I'm, I need you to get out of that. 
right? I need you to get out of that. Spend time with your notebook, spend time journaling and get, we got messages to give you. A digital detox will save you. And, and an old school, right? Oh, I don't have it. But behind me, I have my notebook, a little, maybe it's a dollar now. I don't know, but a, like a little 75 page notebook. Took it with me. Had somewhere to go today. I knew I was going to be sitting for a while. Took my book and I took that notebook. And then whenever I was reading and my, I couldn't focus on the pages anymore, I was like, mm, I think it's time to write. And I just started writing. And I did. I wrote about three, four pages of good stuff. And it was something that needed to happen. I wasn't on my phone the whole time, scrolling and looking through other people's lives. No, I was living mine. I was reflecting on me, my holistic lifestyle, what I want to do. Other Some other things that happen with your holistic lifestyle that would help with the healing process, because like I said, it takes time. Healing emotional wounds takes time, is movement. Having at least 30 minutes of movement uh, or uh, meditation, having some quiet time. Your meditation does not have to be someone talking to you through meditation, you can have guided imagery imagery, and that type of meditation. What I have learned is if I can, if I just sit and work on breath, work on my breath, which is something that I'm working on getting my certification in breath work. Cause that the breath I've learned so much, like I said, from just from energy healing and, and healing myself and understanding like how all this flows and how much control we have that we don't think we have control over self, like how we can truly help ourselves heal instead of trying to find more and more and more information. No, we sit and we do some inner work. We we connect to who we need to connect to. We ask our questions. When they give us the work, we go do the work. But yeah, body movement, making sure you get that in um, at least 30 minutes a day of some type of movement, moving the body in some way. The body was built to move. So moving it in some way, um, having a good playlist. Right. Because that also messes with your frequency and your energy and healing whenever it comes to your holistic lifestyle. Some of the stuff you used to listen to, you might still enjoy, but it may not be filling for you right now. So during this time that I am cutting back on things, um, my <laughs> the number one playlist on my uh, Spotify is meditation music. I don't care where we are. Hit that meditation music because that, that right again is the healing process. Now, if I was to turn on. <laughs> Some of my uh, my playlists where it's some rap or some R&B or pop or something like that, that would take me into a whole nother thing. And would it, it might boost my mood, but right now I'm needing to go within and not listening to other people's words and their voice on things. It's I'm myself. My soul is calling me to go within to take care of me. And so that's what I do. So having a good playlist. I have my favorite meditation songs like meditation music can play and it's like oh that's my favorite me and a, a friend of mine was where we were going somewhere one day and i just had meditation music playing and that's what happened she's like oh girl this is my favorite song i was like yours me too i don't know the artist or nothing but it was just the tone the flow the sound that just calms you and soothes you so your music style also affects your spirit so in this holistic lifestyle like these are things that you do to help you with the process of emotional healing because you are however many years old you are you're asking to, if you're asking for healing, you're asking to do that work that has happened back in the past. So you think of it's 365 days in a year, 52 weeks in a year. That's a lot of healing work. That's a lot of healing work. So it takes time. And it could be like the minimal, small little things that could be, that need to be healed, but it takes time. And it doesn't have to be as hard as you think it is if you just allow yourself to one, trust the process, get you a mentor, get you somebody that you can go to, trust the process, do the work, heal, move the body, cut back on your social media, set the mood, watch what you're listening to, uh, get your sleep in, because man, sometimes it comes in dreams, right? Sometimes you'll get your messages, your downloads in dreams. The next step in your emotional healing journey, just, I don't think it was a dream, I think it was meditation, but I, yeah, so in, I had, something had come up in my meditation, and I didn't know exactly what that was. And I was like, okay, so I wrote it down because I'm like, let me write it down. So that way, if it does happen, I've written it. It came up here and I even said it out loud. Well, uh, when I was sitting and waiting on this appointment, it hit me and I was like, that's what that was in that meditation? I didn't know that's what that was. Oh, well, that makes sense. Now, if I wouldn't have taken that time to sit in meditation and as things were coming to me, like take the time to write it down. And then ask, and I had to ask, I was like, what does this mean? I don't understand. Can you tell me, give me some more insight on what this means? And it came to me again when I was in it's subtle energy. So again, when I was sitting, right, I was sitting in this office just waiting and 
I had I was quiet. It was quiet in there. It was some stuff going on in the background. But once you get into, once you are in tune with like, and you don't allow the, ooh, once you are in tune and you don't allow the subtle distractions that's going on around you, and you can focus and clear everything else out, you can still get in tune. So while I was in this place, this office, there's phones ringing. There's people behind the desk doing things. There's a TV on. Where's the music playing? No. Then there just was a TV on and then cars driving by. Right? And then whatever else was going on in the office back behind me. I don't even remember. Like, I was cognizant to know, like, if something was about to go down. Okay. But I was able to tune all that out and I was just reading. And after I got done reading, like I said, after I couldn't follow with my reading, I'm like, ah, you got something to write down. I just started writing. And that right there was enough for me to get the message that was given to me in my meditation. I was like, oh, that's what that meant. Right. Quiet. You when you let the outside noise distract you, distract you, all that energy from outside, it's hard to come within and listen. Sometimes fear comes up and you're afraid to listen to what that is. You you clean all that out. You clean all that part out with writing, going to speak to somebody, having a mentor or a coach or someone to be able to talk to so that you can get that out. And then then that way, whenever you start to get the downloads, when the creator starts to speak to you, you can get it right. You'll get it. You'll be able to understand it. All right. Um, so sleep is definitely something that you um, should work on if you want to uh, to be able to. To continue to. Continue to be able to not just connect to your spirit, but honestly, have a good day. Right. Sleep plays a huge part, an important role in restoring your body back to its health that it needs to. I will I, sleep is something that's so, so very important to me to the point of like, if I know that if I'm over at somebody else's house or, or like, oh, we're going to do this. Let's say that. Let's say like we were going to do this, uh, like a girl sleepover or something like that. We all had our individual rooms, but if it got too noisy or two, if it was too much for me, or I, and I felt like mm, I need to go within and refuel, I would gladly, you know, hey, I'm actually going to go and lay down for a little bit, right? Like that's how important it is to me. I'm not staying up late all night. Like y'all, I need to go to sleep because <laughs> that sleep fuels the body, and so that is also something that you need during this time where you are healing your wounds, right? Healing that emotional wound. That I don't think we realize how much energy it takes emotionally to continue to try and suppress all that stuff that is going on that you that is asking you to heal i don't think we realize that like it takes a lot of energy to continue to suppress it takes a lot to come out to through your tears or through writing because because it it can have a strong hold on you so it can take not take a lot it can, it's very it can be very strong when it comes out of you um yeah that's the best way i can explain it right now like it can it can be very powerful coming out of you, but it calls it, once it comes out of you, you have more space to do what you need to do when it comes to the healing process. The more that you suppress, the harder it is because now you're finding coping mechanisms, right? You're unnecessarily using these coping mechanisms to continue to suppress things down. So you got to stop coping. So in my chakra course, I actually have a meditation that talked about coping excessively when we are, when we are taking coping to this outrageous level that we don't need to anymore. So instead of doing the work, we're using things that are okay to use or like normal coping skills to use. Coping can even be you showing up to your consultant, your coach, your therapist, whomever's office and continuing to do the same thing and have the same questions going on. And you're not doing the work that we've given you for homework. You just want to keep talking excessively. That's a throat chakra. Excessive talking is like, well, I'm going to therapy, but are you doing the work? I'm going to coaching. I'm going to see my mentor. Are you doing the work? Right? That part is great to go, but are you doing the work so that when you come back, we can say, here goes the next leg of the journey, or let's talk about what this looks like. If you didn't do the work, how can we go to the next step? And then you're mad and it's like, well, dang, this stuff don't work. No, you're not working. <laughs> you're not working. It's not that the process doesn't work. You're not wanting to truly invest in the process and work, which would mean investing in yourself. So um, nourishing the body, eating things that um, are fueling you. And not filling you and actually eating. Um, that was something that I um, I was doing some work on this week um, with my own health journey. And I was like, let me start tracking my calories again. Because I don't think that um, 
like my the the types of food that I'm eating, I don't think I'm getting enough of it. And so I wanted to see what it was and see what I was doing. And yeah, I was right. And so I was like, okay, so what are you gonna do to change this? Because you're clearly not eating what you need to eat and not eating the amount that you need to eat. You're eating less and your body can't even do nothing. Your body can't give you, it can't do anything with what you're giving it because it's trying to hold on to it because it thinks it's in survival. So the same thing, like when it comes to breath work, I talked about it earlier and I was talking to my uh, mentor about that. And I was like, I said, and I, and I told her, I was like, I've said it before. I was like, but I feel that my breath is still thinks that it's in survival mode. I said, I can tell by the way I breathe. I said, it's not normal. Like I, I said, you can just, you just breathe. Right. And you know, you breathe because if I wasn't breathing, I'd be dead. Right. So I'm breathing, but it isn't, um, my patterns are off. I can tell that my patterns are off. So whenever this breath course came up, I was like, oh, it's on, oh, it's me. Like, and after I get done doing this and I got some more videos I'm going to do, oh, I'm going to this breath course. Cause I'm like, tell me more about it. Tell me more about this breath. Cause breath is life. Breath is also death. The absence of it is death. So I want to know, know more about breath and how the oxygen, you know, like when you inhale, that also helps carry blood through the cells. Like it's just a whole lot. And I can't wait to get into it. Like I'm super excited about it. But just like just like that, like I continue to do my own healing process. So although I, I've had I've done the relational my relationship with food and healing and then I've done uh, quite a few dives into the chakra system and healing. And then just this last fall, I did um, a dysfunctional family model of healing and getting into understanding that level of healing and healing generational trauma and healing generational wounds and all that like that was a whole different thing so a lot of it kept me in um doing a lot of root work right uh root and crown work and so i had to learn like this time that like i need to make sure i'm nourishing myself not just because the other ways i got it but whenever i make i eat my the foods that i eat i had to clear out a lot of what i was taught about nutrition uh, so I had to go back and revisit that part of me. I was like, let's go back and revisit that part of you and clear that out from what you've learned, picked up from 2016 until now. And it was a whole lot of stuff. Again, trying to lead by fear and not by facts. You know, oh, if you eat this, this will happen. Or if you eat this, this will happen. And so it just, I just started collecting it. And I noticed, I'm like, you're not nourishing your body. She's missing a lot. She's missing a whole lot of nourishment. You might be eating, like your eating habits are great. Like you ain't eating nowhere where you used to but you're not getting enough of what you need. So just like that, like that took me on a whole nother ride, whole, whole ride last month. It took me on a whole ride. Cause I was like, damn, here I am. You know, and I tell my clients all the time, like this, and I'm telling y'all right now, I'm like, this ain't something that just happens. Like you got work to do, right? I'm telling y'all right now, you got work to do. And then I tell you again, like I continue to, to do my own work because I'm clearing my vessel to make sure that I'm a clear channel. So whenever you do come and work with me, that I'm not blocked by all of my stuff that I can't help you get in tune and get in contact with you to help you through your stuff. No. Healer, heal, thy, heal thyself. That's what I do. I take care and heal myself so that whenever my ladies come into the room, right, for mentorship, coaching, or counseling, or whatever the case may be, I'm be able to get there with them, and we got work to do, right? We got some work to do. So for me, it was this season was nourishing my body. Nourishing my body. Next. Slow down, girl. Slow it down. When it comes to this holistic lifestyle and healing these emotional wounds, slow it down. The overfunctioning part of us, we miss that. Like I said earlier, we miss that subtle energy of spirit speaking to us, saying, hey, just do this. We miss that. And so we pick up and catch everything that's loud and in our face a lot of times. And so we get addicted to the, the loud and in our face stuff, which a lot of times is social media and YouTube. <laughs> and then we get off track. And so I go back again. I tell my ladies. Just write. Get it out of your head. Write. If you're afraid of facing yourself and what and all the things that you've collected and you got up in your head, write about it. Write about it. Get it out of your head. Get it out of your head. You're going to sit, shed some tears. Write about it. You're going to get angry. Write about it. You're going to experience a whole heck of an emotional roller coaster ride. Write about it. The stories that I get from, because I've already told, like for me, me doing the writing work, I have clarity like on 10. That's why I keep a journal, clarity on 10. Because I'm like, what? I even put one. I got me another one, <laughs> kept it in my, in my purse. Because I'm like, I, I need this just in case I'm out and I need to write something down for me to remember. Yeah. I don't care how small, how big my purse is. I, I need something in there. So that way, if I, I need to write down something, I can. Because I can't always take what's in the bag or like one of my notebooks like this. I have to. I need something a little bit smaller 
but self-study is always going on and I, and I enjoy it because it gives me time to then back up and do some and do extra work do fun things right so this time um i had to get into my creativity i needed to i wanted to i was craving it getting back into that creative muscle of mine i'm like and how can i do that and so i had bought a, a sketch pad and that helps me slow down just drawing because in my drawing it's very i because i can usually see the picture of whatever it is in my head and so i just draw it from memory um if i can't get the picture on my phone i just draw it from memory it depends on what's coming up and so I was like, I like that. And so I started drawing and I started getting these, my markers out. Um, I hadn't got my crayons out yet or my color pencils, but I just, I just started drawing. And I was like, this is what I miss. I miss this, right? I'm, and so I started doing more of that. So whenever I would get um, a message or I'd see something because nature talks to you all the time. And so just recently, yeah. So nature talks to you all the time. And so I had been getting, you know, these these vibes and feelings from just things i'm seeing in nature so instead of me writing down what the animal was or what the insect was or what went on i would draw it i'd write down what it was but then i'd draw it out and then that would take me back to whatever it is i'm supposed to be um, researching and get more information on but it's just like it's beautiful like nature is beautiful to be able to tap into if you slow down you can get in tune to you a whole lot more so you can do that meditative part you can start with just walking for meditation doing your dishes uh, vacuuming, just things that we would do, folding laundry, like just things that we would do to keep the body busy, the mind then can get on this wave and this frequency of calming down and getting in tune. You throw on some meditation music with that girl, mm. you talk about peace, man, man. All right. Another, uh, which are to help with the healing emotional wounds and um, understanding that the healing process takes time. Girl, I'm going to need you to use the absolute no. It, it is, it's a no for me. It's a no. No, I don't want to do that. No, thank you. Oh, you think you could stay after? Actually, I have plans. So no, I can't do that. Oh, man, we really need help. Blah, 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 blah. I understand. I can't do that right now. You talk about, girl, <laughs> that's one thing that I do hear a lot from my ladies is like, Whitney, I need you. Help me out with this. Girl, help me. Help me put it into some words where I can say it this way. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Because I love having some tough conversations. Not in the moment necessarily. <laughs> Let me say that. When the when the mirror is flipped around and it's time for me to have some tough conversations, I'm like, "Let me get my tea. Let me get my whole self together. Let me stop doing whatever I'm doing. Let me sit down. Let's have this conversation because I need to be focused and um <laughs> and I got to be in my right mind, body and spirit whenever we have the conversation. Whatever the conversation is. And it's tough. Might just be tough to me at that time depending on whatever I'm was going through and processing for myself. But at the end of the day, like saying no, having tough conversations, uh, being firm about our boundaries is needed. Or we're going to continue to be upset and continue to get agitated and feel like we have to overfunction and overdo things so that we can get our needs met. But really, our needs aren't being met. They're only halfway getting met. So it's an absolute no. No, I cannot take that on extra. Oh, man, they'll get you. Volunteer, volunteer work, too. Oh, but we really need. Um, uh, I can't do that i'm not the one no i don't have time for that today this time well when do you think you will at this point i don't know uh if i if that comes back up i will definitely reach out you know but i don't have time for that right now whitney what are they gonna think about me i don't know and does it matter does it really matter it doesn't i know it feels like oh but it <laughs> saying no can free you Girl, it can free you to do a whole lot of other things. So, I'm oh, a tease getting coach. So, say no. Say no. Absolutely no. The big things that you think you need to do, the small things that you think you need to do, what is it going to cost you if you say yes? If you say yes to whatever that is, what is it going to cost you down the, the long way, long haul? Because I've said yes to some things that I, in the moment I could do because I was putting everything together and trying to scrunch everything together. And then, all it took is like one pin to unravel. And then my whole day started going down here and I was like going downhill. And I'm like, why did you say yes? Because <laughs> now my heart isn't into the thing I said yes to. My mind is all is thinking about all the things that need to go on. And my body is like, Damn, here we go. Right. Here we go. Here comes stress. Here comes inflammation. Here comes overworking. Let me give her some adrenaline to help keep her going. All that stuff starts to come up. All that stuff starts to come up. Now I'm doing damage to my body when I could have just said no. Cause I knew I already had enough on my plate for the day. Been there, done that. We can say no. 
And if that's not something that we can do, we can say no, gracefully say no. All right. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help whenever it comes to the healing process. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Also follow through with the help. If it's something that is going to resonate. And also when you're asking for help, um, be mindful of that person's time. And and if, it, if you're getting help from a service provider, make sure that you are like honor whatever it is that they say, like, hey, I don't I can't do this for you. If they come to you and say, I can't do this and you keep begging, please, please like honor what they honor what they've told you and do the work. It can't be this. It has to be more. No, no. Let go of that feeling like a victim, that victim mindset. I made a video about that last week, week before um, the martyr with the one that's always doing, doing. And then after that as well, I'm always doing this for y'all. Nobody ever does this for me. That martyr, girl, we got to let that go. That servant always trying to overdo and please, please, please. That people please them is what I think of. Always trying to please, please, please. And then at the end of the day, you're still left depleted. Ask for help. Take the help. Do the inner work. When some things start coming up, sit down, check yourself. Is it emotions or is it facts? What are we doing? Right? Is it irrational or is it reality? And then 10, get you some support. And I already talked about that earlier, what that support can look like. It could be a coach. It could be a mentor. Uh, it can be a counselor. It could be uh, a consultant, a uh, spiritual advisor, whatever the case may be, get some help so that you can go through, get through this process and don't have to feel like you're in this stagnancy, this pool of stagnancy. So with that being said, um, yeah. So I hope that you got that you understand that one, it takes time. We're going to continue to do this emotional healing on through until it's our time to like to breathe that last breath, right? Can't wait. Oh, I can't wait to get into this breath course. So until we breathe that last breath or release that last breath, you will continue to do healing. That's just the way it is. The more that you take on and do the healing work now, not, and when I say more, cause that's that over function came up. It was like, Hey, that red, I had a light just popped on my head, red light, like caution, caution. When <laughs> or stop, when you take on this healing work, it doesn't mean you take it all on and do it all at one time. When I did my, um, when I was working with uh, my sponsor and I did my first initial like deep dive into emotional healing uh, and healing my connection with food, I went day to, by day, like literally question one was one day. Question two was day two. So I had to take time to create my own sacred space, right? Have my time where I'm going to type out, because that's what I did at that time, type out what to answer the question and what the question was, and then do some self-reflection on that. Did my prayer, went on about my day. So did it take time? Yeah, it, it took a long time to get through, you know, all the steps, but it didn't matter. It did not matter because it helped me to heal and it gave me that accountability and I knew that there was something that I needed to do. So for me, like that's why I created my chakra course the way I did it, because I'm like, let me tell you about it. Right. I'm going to tell you about it. You can get you some things to work on, whether if you want to get to your crystal stones, uh, aromatherapy or some different type of foods to eat that reflect that chakra, whatever the case may be. Right. Because I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. Here's some things that can help support you. Here's the shadow work that you need to do to do it. Take it a step at a time. Take it a day at a time. So if there's 20 questions, it might take you 20 days to get through. You might. And and the thing is, is that you feel well with it. Like it is well with me. So let's say that question number two that I had on there, you maybe only had three sentences to write. That's OK. Then for that day, you're done. Go on to the next. And then when the next day comes, now you're on question three. Maybe question three, you wrote about four or five pages. OK. The next day, take it just a step at a time. We want to rush through this. You're not rushing through this is not going to help. It just continues to overwhelm and overload you and you begin to feel heavy. You start to think that this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. I shouldn't have opened up Pandora's box, even though, like I said, it was going to happen regardless. This time you're just being intentional about doing the work because you want to continue to show up as you as your authentic self, not as the, uh, the masked self, but as your authentic self, not as who they told you you needed to be, who you're supposed to be, but who you truly are. This work is intentional and it takes time. So with that being said, um, I would say slow it down. Don't rush the process. Grief needs time. It takes time and it needs space. It might be you on the floor crying, like in a ball, in a fetal position, whatever the case, whatever feels comfortable to you. Or it might just be you on your couch crying, whatever the case may be. 
getting it out an, an uncontrollable loud it could be i mean it hurts going back through your pain can hurt not as much as it hurt whenever you experienced it whenever you went through it the first time letting go of your fears i don't want to hurt anybody i don't want to blame anybody oh no i ain't asking you to blame nobody i'm asking you to take responsibility for yourself that's what i'm asking you to do to go back and clean up these wounds right to clean out these wounds and to do the work that you need to do to take care of you so yeah so i think that's it oh so if you are interested in my chakra program um it is actually in the link below so you can click the link below it take you to my chakra program and i take you through all seven um i take you to understand uh, the chakras and then this is this is a good foundation to start with you get the shadow work you get an understanding of each chakra and then you get um how to nourish each chakra um in video format the shadow work is all of that is in a notebook uh you get quizzes that you can do um that's already in the notebook but it's also in the course that you can take before you dive deep into the, the chakra just to see where you are and then i have meditations in there and i have ways you can um, use aroma therapy and juices uh smoothies or things like that if that's what you want to do whenever you're working the chakras you don't have to use that part but that's that holistic part of me i'm like girl get your nutrients in <laughs> so anywho i hope that you have a great day if you have any questions let me know um i hope that this has resonated with you in some way just to remember that grief takes time and it needs space you need space to heal i've done the healing work continue to do the healing work on a daily weekly monthly basis it's just at an end the lighter you've become the more you feel you start to feel and you feel better you're no longer numbing these things and these emotions don't scare you like they used to and you're not pushing back oh i don't want to do that you like all right we here what we getting into because at that point that's how it is i'm like oh oh this memory okay i'm i didn't even think that was an issue but let's go ahead and get into it right let's get into it that's how i have to look at it now because i'm like as i work through it i know that there's something better on the other side and i'm just not down for living in this pool of stagnancy what i love most about rivers is you can't step in the same river twice that's what i love about it the water is always changing always flowing that sacral chakra is always flowing because that's that water element that's what i want it's us to flow not to be stuck in this pool of stagnancy getting murky and you can't come up out of it and bloom like you need to because every time you try you got all these other things that's crowding your mind and this cloud in your body because you're not taking care of it and then your spirit is speaking but it's so subtle you can't even hear it we clean that work up all right so i'll talk to you soon take good care of yourself all right peace <laughs>